Well, concussions might be common among professional athletes, but they're now becoming more common among kids. And Dr. Michael Sevilla is in this morning with more on this alarming trend and what parents need to keep in mind. Good morning, Dr. Sevilla. Good morning, Jeff. Well, tell us, uh, you used to, or you are a uh, sideline physician for a, mm -hmm. a soccer team, is that right? Yeah, I, I used to be the uh, team physician for the uh, Salem High School boys um, soccer team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw a lot of concussions. And uh, in addition to football, soccer is, is, uh, is a sport that uh, has a lot of concussions as well. And especially girls soccer is what they're talking about. Yeah, in a study that was uh, announced yesterday uh, from the American Academy of Pediatrics, that was one of the things that they brought out is that uh, female athletes are more prone uh, than male athletes for concussions. Mm -hmm. um, so especially this time of year, uh, girls soccer, um, in addition to boys football, those are the main two sports that we're looking at. Why are we seeing so many uh, concussions? Because I think it jumped in 10 years from like 7,000 to like 20. 7,000 uh, mm -hmm. cases. Mm -hmm. uh, why so many in such a short amount of time? I think the good part about it is that there's been an increased awareness uh, of it and it's been diagnosed more. And in that study that was uh, announced uh, from ages 8 to 13, they saw a doubling of the amount of uh, concussions that they saw in the ER. Mm -hmm. And in high school students, it was, was even more than that. So I think recognition of the symptoms is, is one of the reasons why. Now, obviously, football, you're banging heads together, soccer, hitting the, the, the soccer ball with your head and mm -hmm. so forth. Uh, uh, what should parents be on the lookout for if they think that their child has a concussion? The main symptoms are, are things like headache and nausea, dizziness, not necessarily uh, passing out or loss of consciousness, and mm -hmm. especially for the parents too, the, the kids not really acting like themselves, uh, maybe stumbling around, uh, very subtle symptoms that parents have to look out for. And it's also hard to detect a uh, concussion even through medical devices, is that right? That's right, yeah, most, uh, most testing, CAT scans, that type of thing, they wouldn't diagnose something like that. A lot of it is symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things, too, at the Ohio High School Association, the governing body for high school sports uh, in Ohio, um, they have a new policy now that you know, if there's any athlete that has any of those symptoms, they're removed from the field of play mm -hmm. and they have to be cleared by a physician or medical professional before they can come back. And in some places, uh, it's at least 10 days if they have symptoms of a concussion that they are to stay off the field for, for at least 10 days. Is that right? Yeah, symptoms could last from 7 to 10 days. Um, and a lot of physicians, they, they don't clear them to go back until all the symptoms are gone, mm -hmm. which can obviously have a, a huge impact on the team. But, but for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for the athlete, you know, they have to make sure that they're okay to go back to play. And what happens if uh, these symptoms go unrecognized or untreated? Well, that's one of the interesting things from the study is that everybody is, is uh, uh, saying, well, there's a doubling or a tripling of the numbers, but a lot of the concussions go undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very important for athletes and for parents to recognize those subtle symptoms. If there's a question, talk to your doctor about it. And uh, you being on the sidelines, who pushes to put the kids back in more, the parents or the coaches? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the coaches and the parents. So, uh, so it's very important for, uh, uh, for coaches, parents, athletes um, to, to really recognize those symptoms. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a, a, a myth at the time, well there's probably still is, that you can play through a lot of these injuries, but it's not worth to take the risk. Is that right? I think part of the education too has been these professional athletes who, who have had concussions and uh, you know, especially kids are seeing some of the complications from these pro athletes having concussions. So they're really seeing that have to be very careful when you get any kind of these symptoms. All right, Dr. Sevilla, thank you very much. We appreciate you as always coming Thanks. in to talk to us about... <laughs>